Meet little Timmy. Little Timmy is new to the server and has just finished building his very first house. Nice house, little Timmy. Unfortunately for Timmy, he made one critical error by building his house right next to P-Town's brand new Automatic Persistent Zombie Sorter. Bad move, little Timmy. A bad move indeed. Welcome everybody to Minecraft Math Magic. This is my tutorial series where I build cool stuff and then show it to you guys. And then show you how to build it. And then, if you think it's cool, you try to build it too. And we all have a lot of fun. <laughs> Today we're taking a look at the Automatic Persistent Zombie Sorter. This is a machine that separates persistent zombies from non-persistent zombies. And what a persistent zombie is, is one who can pick up an item. Now when zombies are holding an item, that means they will not despawn. No matter how long they're in the game or how far away you move from them, they will never disappear. Unlike most of these guys who are being sorted out as we speak. Pew. There he goes. Now I'm using pumpkins to do this. Um, pumpkins act as headgear, but they don't have a damage value. Typical headgear like uh, leather, gold, you know, iron, diamond, will eventually break as it accumulates damage that the zombies take while in sunlight. Pumpkins don't take damage, so they will last forever. So it's very handy. But you can do the same effect uh, with anything. You can use swords, any tool, any block even. As long as a zombie can pick something up, he will do so. So, what I really like about this design is that it's both forwards and backwards compatible. I'm gonna back away because they're a bit loud. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, um, it will work in both older versions of Minecraft as well as future versions of Minecraft. Which is very difficult to do, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, but that means if you build this in your 1.7.5 world, or older, if you're running something older than that, um, by the time 1.8 rolls around, or if you switch to the snapshots, uh, like I am, I'm currently running 14 week 11b, uh, that means you will have no problems at all with this design, because it'll you won't even have to change anything about it for it to work uh, in 1.8, which is pretty sweet. So if this seems like something you're interested in, if you'd like to have your own horde of zombies at your command, then keep watching because we're about to build this sucker together. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is find a zombie spawner and prepare the spawning area. Zombie spawners can spawn mobs in an area of 8x8, eight eight, uh, centered on the northwest corner, which is, if we look at F3 here, where X and Z are the smallest, and I've outlined that area with a white clay box. We're going to want to lower the floor two blocks to give zombies a place to pass through, as well as put up some walls, and I'll do that right now. And there we go. Our spawning room is now prepared for maximum spawning efficiency. Just remember that you want to have two blocks of space between the spawner and floor, and two blocks of space between the spawner and the ceiling. I recommend actually putting two blocks directly above the spawner, and that's to prevent any undesirable mob types such as skeletons or creepers or spiders or whatnot to spawn uh, right on this block because it is a solid block, the spawner itself, and mobs can do that. It's very rare, but we don't want them jamming up the system. So the next step is add our water source blocks in order to channel the zombies into a collection point. So since this room is eight by eight and water flows eight blocks, that's very convenient for us. Just add a row of water source blocks here in the back down one block. Right here we'll add another water source block and that will push them into this little room here and we'll add one more water source block there in the back corner. I'm going to glass that up so we can see what's going on inside with the zombies. And there we have it. Alright, the next step of this process is to add the rails and the cart retrieval system that we'll be using to collect the zombies and sort them. I've gone ahead and laid out where we're going to be placing the rails uh, on this clay here, just for visual clarity, obviously not necessary. And the first thing we're going to do is place a dispenser here, right in the corner, just adjacent to the corner where the zombies will be, and this will shoot the carts upwards into the track we're about to lay. This track here is 14 blocks long, 14 right there at the turn, um, and that's just a balancing thing I've I worked out. Uh, it seems to be the most consistent for separating the zombies. We'll talk about more of that in a minute. Um, and this little doohickey here, this isn't necessary in 1.7.5, but if you're using this in the snapshots, this little turn here will keep the carts from stopping when they hit this incline, because they will be going pretty fast with the zombies. 
and uh, that's an unfortunate mechanic we have to work around. But this little quirk here will, will take care of that for us. Next we're going to set some hoppers. So, just a hopper, I should clear this out so we can see. A hopper facing the dispenser there. A double chest here so we can put as many cards as we want. And hopper, hopper, hopper. So this hopper is facing the chest and these two hoppers are facing that. We're going to add one more rail there, a piece of sand, and a cactus. Now what this does, if I can get a cart to demonstrate, when a cart hits a cactus it will break immediately, but just because it's right above this hopper, there's no chance of the cactus breaking the cart because the hopper will suck it up and send it back into the chest, uh, which will send it into the dispenser here immediately, so that's very nice. Just a brief demonstration, boom! And we should see it in here. Yes, sir. Excellent. All right, now that we've got our track set, it's time to add some redstone mechanics to this bad boy. This is my favorite part, actually. <laughs> um, first, we're going to set up an item detection system. Basically, we're going to have stuff on a pressure plate here. And I'll put some glass around it to protect the items. And this will just tell us when a zombie with the ability to pick up a pumpkin, in our case, has done so. So we're going to stick a dropper facing it, and we're going to chuck a bunch of pumpkins in there. Great. Um, and now we're going to run some redstone. What we want is a signal to come from the pressure plate whenever there's an item on it, a pumpkin. Uh, the pressure plate is on this red block. And by the way, I've marked out where all the redstone stuff is going with red clay, just so you guys can see once again. So um, torch here will power the dropper. There we go. And when an item is off the pressure plate, it will unpower the torch, which will drop another pumpkin on there. Like so. We'll stick that guy in there. Now, I forgot to add these. This is the other path for the zombies that are persistent. So, by default, non-persistent zombies, the regular guys that we want to get rid of, will be sent around this turn and back towards our cart retrieval system there. Persistent zombies, hopefully will be sent down this path. So we need a way to wire this detection system with this turn. And what we're going to do is put a torch there, another torch here, and then run redstone all the way here to a torch. Now, by default, when this rail is powered, it will be turned that way. When it's unpowered, it will be turned that way. Oops, that's a rail. <laughs> there we go. Um, and this little doohickey here is just a pulse extender. This uh, kind of gives us a little wider margin of error because sometimes pressure plates take a little longer to raise back up and unpower once an item has been removed from there. So just in case that happens, we've got a little bit longer signal going all the way to this turn. So the zombies will definitely be sent in the correct direction. So I'll grab this pumpkin. We can see the turn changes. And then when another pumpkin is sent, the turn returns to its original state. So, now that we've got our item detection system installed, we have a way of detecting which zombies are persistent and separating them out from non-persistent zombies by sending them down this path. Now what we need to do is add a way of getting rid of the non-persistent zombies that will accumulate on this hopper here once their cart breaks at the cactus. In the past I had done this by using sunlight to burn off the regular zombies, because they wouldn't have the protective headgear of the pumpkin. But with the addition of zombie, uh, baby zombies, I should say, uh, a while ago in the game, uh, those guys don't take sunlight damage. So what we need to do is uh, lure them into a trap some other way. And the best way is to exploit their own pathfinding and use villagers. So what I'm going to do is stick trapdoors here so they think they can walk off. Dig it down two blocks and stick some lava in there. We're going to put a villager right here, but first we're going to... Make a little enclosure for the guy. And something here, uh, just right at face level so he doesn't walk off into the trap. Because that would be bad. <laughs> now I found you want to put blocks in the corner as well. Uh, because sometimes zombies think they can pathfind into this spot here and hit the guy through the corner. Because they can do that. So we're going to just glass it off like this. So, they're... so the only way from this block to this villager is through the lava. Make sure you don't put a block next to the cactus though because it will break and pop off. There we 
we go. And make sure you have two block clearance. Uh, so regular zombies can fit through this gap right here. Very good. All right. So I'm going to need to volunteer from the audience, please. Thank you, sir. We're all oh, wow. <laughs> what a willful volunteer. Let's do one more. Just oh. Very good. Sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to walk off. But they will eventually walk into the lava. And they will do so in plenty of time before another cart arrives. All right. There's only one more redstone component we need to add to this de design in order to get it up and running, and that is a timer that will eject mine carts through this dispenser at a regular interval. My preferred method is Ethos Hopper Timer, and since it's not my design, I'm not going to explain how it works, but I will say that it's very good, and uh, you should definitely check out the tutorial he did on that. But I will build it just so you guys can see what it does. And I'm using a vertical arrangement that I found works pretty well. I'm gonna have to stick a redstone block in there sometime. Perfect place. <laughs> okay, so that should be going now. Now, uh, just in case you don't know this, um, if you apply a redstone signal to one of these end blocks here, um, and again, I'm using the red box to show where I'm putting redstone stuff. Um, it will lock the timer um, until you turn it off. So you can use that basically as an on-off switch. Alright guys, this machine is about ready to run. There's just one last final touch we need to add in order to get things rolling, and that is the powered rails. Now keep in mind we want to add just enough powered rails to get empty minecarts around this track and up into the cactus without adding too much velocity to minecarts that have zombies in them, because with the new minecart mechanics and the current snapshots, uh, they would definitely have a problem with this area. So keep in mind that we want this machine to be fully functioning equally well in uh, both 1.7.5 as well as the current snapshots, and I think I've come up with a balance that will do just that. So the first thing you need to know is that when a dispenser ejects a minecart from below onto a power drill here, if it's flat, it will not move, even if it's powered. So what we want to do is just give this a slant to give gravity the hand in getting things rolling. And we'll do that by adding a rail here, a block above. We delete it, replace it with a block, and that will stay slanted. And we can add some power to it. Just be careful not to update this block by replacing this rail here, because uh, that will cause this rail to revert to its flat state, and you'll have to do the trick again. Okay, we want to add one more rail on this side here, and a lever there. Another rail here, and a lever. And just keep in mind I'm using the the red clay blocks here just to make it more visually apparent where I'm using redstone stuff, so you guys can see very clearly. And two powered rails here, and that should be just enough. So let's test it out with an empty minecart, make sure it's working. Very good, just enough velocity. So, now we want to test it out uh, with the junction here, and I'll ride it myself. Since I'll pick up the pumpkin, it'll be just like if a zombie with persistent ability was about to pass uh, down there. So I'll hop in, pick up the pumpkin, and the junction works. Beautiful. Alright guys, the machine is fully operational, and the spawner is running. I actually saw this chicken jockey just spawn, so that's uh, that's going to be interesting. I'm really curious <laughs> how the machine's going to handle that. I've never seen that before. Um, so let's go ahead and turn it on and, and just uh, see what happens. I forgot to mention, you should probably add a couple blocks here. For some reason, zombies taking damage in sunlight will see uh, this water as... Oh, I think he just killed the chicken. Oh. Well, that's really sad. There's also a glitch where baby zombies jumping up will sometimes take suffocation damage in the block above them. Uh, not my problem. <laughs> but it looks like we got a persistent zombie about to take a ride, so let's see if the junction works for him. Very nice. So, it looks like everything is working smoothly as intended. So this concludes the tutorial. Um, oh, he just died. Poor guy. 
Um, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and got some ideas from this. Um, as a little bonus, I'll include the building of the dismount system I had here uh, in the opening clip. But yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Yay, bonus footage. So first we're going to need a regular cactus, just like before. A hopper, actually put the chest here, then a hopper, and then a rail on top, and then a comparator attached to the hopper, which is attached to a block. And a block here, a block here. And uh, it doesn't need to be a sticky piston, actually. It'll just be a regular piston. Right there. And then some redstone. And voila! We'll add... Uh, no delay, actually. Uh, what this little device does is just, as soon as a cart passes through the hopper going into the chest, uh, this signal from this comparator here in the repeater will just cause this piston to push whoever is standing here out. So let's, uh, get a zombie. I'll just put a zombie in a cart. There we go. Just like that. Now, usually they'd have a pumpkin and uh, they wouldn't be on fire. But yeah, that's how that works. So, one last time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.